everyone, I'm Steph. Hi, I'm Richard. <laughs> Got a question from Iris Vianney. I have a question. The subject on teen pregnancy in Korea. It's a high rate in the US, but how is it there? Is it common? What happens? This one's kind of difficult to answer for me. Why? I gotta be honest, because I don't know any teens who were actually pregnant in Korea. Very rare to see a young person pregnant here. Like young, like... It's very, very rare. High school young. And I can think of several reasons why that is. I haven't actually ever recalled seeing a teenager pregnant here. Ever. Have you? No, not that I know of. Why do you think that is? It's not because they're not having sex. It's not because there are zero teens that are pregnant. I think that there's actually several factors for me that I know of thinking about why there's possibly not as many girls pregnant in the first place. There's two parts. There's that part and then there is what's happening to the women or the young girls who do end up with pregnancies what happens then? I know a lot of people who didn't actually start dating until they got to college, university because they were just so busy studying. In high school. In high school. Right. Not to mention that if they were going to actually date, then where are you going to go? You can go to a love motel, but you don't have the same kind of privacy. I don't know. I'm sorry. Kitty's distracting me, she's eating the cookies. That's not good, those are chocolate cookies. One thing I've learned in living here a bunch of years is that this is not a topic that is easily spoken about amongst the masses here. It's not easily spoken about at all. You're targeted as somebody who has sex or likes sex or wants to have sex or wants to have a baby or one of those sorts of areas of interest if you start talking about sex or contraception or abortion. Yeah, I can- Kissing? I can get that. Yeah, you just, 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 just don't really talk about stuff like that a lot. And especially for women, especially for females, this is just not a topic to go anywhere near at all unless you want people to think that you're promiscuous. Even at the university level when people are like young and free and a little bit more open maybe in their life, it's still not something that's heavily talked about. Best friends and people that you trust very, very much, yes, this is a topic that can be covered. When you have someone that you trust, you can talk to them about anything. It doesn't matter what culture you're from. That includes here. True. Other than your closest friend or your like, you know, I mean, I guess maybe in some exceptional circumstance, your mother, if you have a really close relationship with her. You wouldn't talk about it. You wouldn't talk about this. For one of the English classes that I teach, I give out journals where they have to read and then write their reaction, actually their experience. And one of them is titled, Contraception is Still in the Shadow. Shadows. This was published in an English language newspaper here in Korea. I just like to get their reaction to it because what they end up talking about is what they learned in sex education class or in health class that they have. These are the ovaries, these are the fallopian tubes, this is where the uterus is. I was just reading a couple of them. One person was talking about how that was the class where they could go and sleep in because they weren't learning anything at all. It wasn't the important class. Virtually none of them have ever learned anything that was applicable to like, for example, when we had sex class and they teachers were showing us how to put a condom on a banana. Did you ever have that? No. You don't remember that? I never had that in my sex education classes. You got robbed. How is that getting robbed? Well, because you learn how to put a condom on it, so therefore, you're learning how to prevent pregnancy. If you do, in fact, choose to have sex, at least you know how to use this particular form of contraception. I don't know, they just made us watch a video showing the horrors of birth to kind of scare you out of it. <laughs> it was a different school. A lot of them say that they know at least one person that was in their school that got pregnant and it was always a huge issue. I give them this contraception journal in particular because I really am curious about this topic here and there's just such little information about it that if I can get some of them to write their experience, all of a sudden a lot of these examples that you don't ever hear about or that no one's ever gonna talk about, it's an inside look into what's really happening that would never be published in a newspaper or on a television broadcast. Dude, in 2002, my brother mailed me a package of condoms because condoms weren't available here then, as recent as 12 years ago. When I first moved to Korea, I had to bring over boxes of tampons because they didn't carry them really. There was only one brand of tampon when I first came to Korea in 2009. How many do they have now? I think there's only three kinds, three or four. They finally started carrying like Tampax and Playtex, but up until then it was one thing called tampon. It was just like the worst fucking tampon I have ever used in my life. Did you just swear? I'm sorry. I. 
Feminine hygiene products get me worked up. Staff from How You Back. Another thing I noticed is there's not a lot of information about this on the web. Before we started filming this, I'm like, let me do a Google search. You get foreigners' experiences with getting pregnant or having issues with having an abortion here or going about considering having an abortion. South Korea has the lowest teen pregnancy rate in the year 2001 of all the developed nations. Wow. 2.9 women per 1,000. That's pretty impressive. Can you guys hear that? That's Maki eating the garbage. What is she doing? What are we doing? <laughs> Getting distracted. I think there's definitely something to abortion and the lack of abortion because in Korea abortion is actually illegal except for certain circumstances including the mother is some sort of physical ailment or it's danger to her body or the fetus or there's some sort of illness ailment. I don't know all the specifics. Or if they were raped. Right, I don't know the specifics either, but abortion is happening here quite a bit, even though it's technically illegal. I have a friend who she got pregnant and the guy dragged her to an abortion clinic without her realizing it. And so she chose not to get an abortion and she has the cutest little kid ever. All of that aside, you do have these illegal abortions that are running rampant, actually. One reason why you may not see this out on the streets in Korea is because if mom finds out that you get pregnant, well, that's a shame to the family. So they're taking them to the abortion clinic immediately to have it fixed. That's one thing I think is a possibility. There's another thing that's I think is a possibility, which is they have these different care homes, teen single mother, not necessarily teen, but single mother homes for women who get pregnant because here in Korea, and this is one thing that's been featured on a lot of Korean dramas, it's actually kind of looked down upon by society for women women to be single mothers. And so they have different facilities set up to help care for these mothers because maybe their parents or you know their families booted them out of their homes. So it's a place where they can stay and be taken care of until they give birth. Nowhere in the world does somebody want to get pregnant, I think, for the most part, at a young age. More and more now, humanity is becoming a little bit more intelligent and educated when it comes to this particular topic. And therefore, people are waiting a little bit longer. Birth rates are coming down in some of these countries over here, Japan namely being one of them, Korea also, the birth rate is down. I'm getting distracted because Kitty's over there. <laughs> Did she stop? She stopped. What are we gonna do if she starts again? One of the articles I was just reading talked about how a girl was not allowed to go to school when the school found out that she became pregnant. That's a girl here. It was a 19 year old girl, so she would have been a senior in high school here. That's significant. I mean, if you think about where we're from, did you ever see a pregnant girl in your high school? Of course, my class secretary was pregnant. With just one girl or was it? No, the <laughs> There was lots of girls in my high school that were pregnant my senior year. I was friends with a few girls that got pregnant and even then, it was probably, you'll see, I'm 38, so it been 20 years ago. It wasn't that shocking and it wasn't that they weren't accepted. It was definitely a little uncomfortable, but that was sort of the trend that was happening and I suppose it's become a normal thing where we're from, but here... It's considered by some people shameful and how could we allow this student to bring shame to our school? But now I think it's illegal. I think I read the same article. Didn't she? They, the school have to tell her that she could continue going to the school? Maki, no. nibble her ear. Nibble, Maki. Ready, you get that one, I get this one. go. Ah, don't do it, don't do it. There's one other thing that I seriously want to talk about and that is contraception in Korea. Going back to that whole thing because birth control pills you can get over the counter very easily with no problems and actually pregnancy tests also. You walk in, you say the name of the product. The most common one in Korea for birth control pills is Mersalan. So you go in and you say Mersalan Juseo and they give you the pills and you give them money and Maki's eating my earring. Yeah, and so I just wonder, you know, like what's their thinking on this as they move forward into the next year, the next decade? You know, are they gonna continue to try and repress this, keep it out of the schools, keep it out of the limelight, out of the public eye? I think it's becoming more and more actually out into the forefront though, because you have the over-sexualization is starting to come into Korea with Korean pop music now has gotten extremely racy and things like that, you know, Korean dramas. You see it more. The girls are starting to kiss back. <laughs> okay, maybe not all of them. So that's it for today's Life in Korea. That's it? We're done? 
That's it. That's all the info I got. If you have a question for us to try and answer, me, me. drop us a note in the comments section. You can drop us a note in the comments section on our blog or head to facebook.com slash hollyouback. That's our Facebook page. Write us a note on our wall. And be sure to give this video a big like it thumbs up. Bugga, bugga, bugga. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for awesome Asian drama and life in Korea adventures. That's it for today's Life in Korea. Experience, Experience it. it! She's looking at herself. She is, yeah, look at that. It's Maki up there, huh? Yeah, it's probably your favorite painting, I'm thinking. Maybe. Come on, say hi, Daddy. We're in love here.